lots Welcome of storage. Welcome to the bridge. Thank you. And if I may, I would like to, to introduce to you Captain Gus Anderson. He is relief captain of Quantum of the Seas. Um, Captain Gus? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ari. Yes, uh, welcome uh, to the bridge. I'm uh, Captain Gus, and uh, I am uh, one of the captains that are on the on the ship. Captain Felix is uh, the one that is in command now. So we can only have one captain at a time, right? So that's why I'm in civilian. But when uh, Captain Felix goes on vacation, then I will take over. And uh, I will be here for a little while, and then I will move over to the next one. And that is called the Anthem of the Seas that we've already in April next year. So come up a little bit uh, further here. Don't be scared, OK? <laughs> and uh, first thing usually people see here is what I am actually standing on right now. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. I could see your wow. reaction. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So uh, that is something that we uh, that we have here in order for us to see where we are going and, and how we are moving when we are actually docking. Uh -huh. So this is one of the docking stations on the on the bridge wing here, and uh, we can see down the whole uh, side of the ship, and uh, we are standing and we do the maneuvers. And just going to switch on a couple of the screens here and. Uh, this is what we call the controls for the acipods. This ship does Sorry, not for the for the acipods. Acipods. Acipods, and uh, this ship does not have a conventional propulsion. It has basically two electrical motors that are uh, sink down into the water and that can turn 360 degrees. Of course, the propeller is turning, but then we just angle the propeller in the direction where we would want to put the forces, and so that is called a pod. And ASI means because it goes around the whole ASI so 360 degrees turn. Huh. So these are the two of that, that we have here, and uh, then we have the controls for the four bow thrusters that we have. So basically, this is how I like to stand. The controls are here, and I stand here and I see down the whole side of the ship. Actually, we don't really see the whole side of the ship. That's why we have the screens here. We have a lot of... TV cameras or CCTV cameras around the ship and then we put them up on the on the screens here so we can see the different areas. They're window screens. Say again? Windows. Windows, windows. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. yes. And uh, of course we have uh, officers on the bow and on the stern and that we communicate with uh, via radio. So we have uh, people officers in all areas so we can uh, communicate with them. So we have a lot of technology, and, but everything is then of course uh, confirmed with uh, human knowledge and eyes and ears. And we, we made the decisions made on that. Is it like a fly-by-wire? Like, like, you know, like in jet, on big airliners, it's, nothing is connected literally, it's just by computer controls. Fly by wire, you know. So when you no, everything is uh, everything is fly by hands. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. No, we don't dock in on the computer. That's that's all manual. Okay. Yes. Uh, whoever it is that is doing the the maneuver, whether it's a captain or a staff captain or one of the officers, we have physically to put our hands on the uh, on the levers here. So we, now it's obviously not connected here, so if I turn this one, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to go back to where it was, but we turn them separately, and then we have a gas pedal basically here. And later on here, you will meet uh, Captain Felix uh, on the inside there, and he will talk a little bit more about the, the layout and things like that. So I just came out here to, or you came out here to see a little bit on the ship side here to get this view, which is quite fantastic, the view <laughs> downstairs and also to uh, get a little a bit of an introduction to the ship. Where are we on the screen? Uh, good question. We are here on the screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So then we can uh, zoom out a little bit. So, and, so, the channel island. so these are the channel islands down yeah. here. And we, have, we, are, we are here now. That's okay, around the channel. Yeah, so we have about, uh, what is that, about 35, 40 miles to the French coast. Okay. And we have... Uh, about 50, 50 plus to the closest English coast, whatever that part of England would be. Uh, that would be Dorset. Dorset, there we go. Right. We have 52 miles to Dorset. Yeah. <laughs> As the crow flies. Yes. <laughs> and then, of course, we have the um, layout of the uh, 
of the route that we have up here in Southampton and around the islands here in the channel. Is that what we've done, we've just gone, so gone around here. Slightly. Yes. Yeah. It's like a giant toy I want to play. Yeah. It is, yes. Isn't it? Yeah, it's, <laughs> a, it's a one billion dollar toy, yeah? Yeah. 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 Wow. Uh, don't put that because the shareholders wouldn't appreciate it. <laughs> no, of course that's 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 how it may see, but of course we do take it quite serious. And yeah, yeah so of course we comes to it. Yeah. We appreciate it. Is that like Grand Theft Ship Auto? I can't imagine. Yeah. It's uh, amazing, absolutely amazing. And um, we have um, quite a few officers uh, here on the arrivals and departures. We have at least captain, staff captain, we have two watch officers, two quartermasters, and then usually there's a pilot, which is a locally known person that comes on board and uh, spends some time with us. All right. What is, can, oh, can I just ask one more? What's the, tri what's the trickier? Is it is it docking is, is as tricky as or is it leaving? Is it coming or going? What's the tricky, trickiest thing you do on this uh, bridge? Coming in, sorry. coming towards a hard surface. Right. Something hard is obviously more trickier and more it demands a little bit more caution than going away from the same hard surface. Yeah. Uh, so so that is definitely the most difficult part, but also the most rewarding. And do you have like simulators I mean, to, tra to train on? We do. Before the ships um, are built, we usually uh, have models on simulators to see what kind of different uh, uh, environmental effects uh, that the ships can handle. You know, wind current and also to which port we're going to go to. Right. Because not all ports can handle ships like, uh, well, like this. Sure it's quite obvious. So Captain Patrick, which you will meet later on, he okay. knows more about that. Yes, we'll right. tell you okay. about uh, our relationship with a company called uh, Resolve, who okay. uh, helps us uh, do all of the simulator training. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I want one of these for Christmas. I want one of these for Christmas. You should be the good. Put them on here. It's the same guy actually doing all of it. It's yes. that he pretends he's doing yeah. it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. More secure. <laughs> cool. So uh, then, uh, since I'm not the one, but uh, he's actually he's here, here, yes, he's I here. can see oh. that. Thank you very much. I know who is the captain. <laughs> <laughs> so let me introduce for you Captain uh, Felix Band. Yeah. Hey! Hi, guys. Welcome to the bridge. Hi, nice to be here. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Okay. We have met before. Hello. Hi. Hello, Mr. So, how do you like it? Yeah, nice. So, this is the bridge or the wheelhouse. So, the place from where we not only navigate the ship, but uh, this is also the safety center. So all different safety installation uh, board the ship is controlled remotely from up here. So the safety center is uh, right behind here and uh, Patrick is going to uh, give you a little uh, talk about safety center from the organization. So, but what I'm trying to say that uh, my team up here not only need to know how to navigate but also how to respond to any emergency that may take place on board. So for instance, 911 calls, they come up here. You know, any emergency that may take place on board, uh, we are the ones responding to it from up here and uh, dispatching people and being in control, in charge. 
So it's not just navigation. And right now, any given time, we have a minimum uh, two licensed officers up here and one lookout. At the moment, we have a uh, first officer, Mar, my paisano from Croatia. <laughs> Actually, from the same place, Dubrovni. Hello. <laughs> so he's uh, taking care of navigation. His assistant is Todd, second officer. And we also have a lookout. He's over there with binocular, our experienced quartermaster. So in case we need to utilize hand steering, then he's the man. He knows how to best steer the ship manually. But uh, truly everything is controlled by computers. And uh, Mauro is right now driving the ship using that little tiny joystick over there, which is called track pilot. A trackpad. Show, show it, Mauro, again. Yeah. Oh, a little that, that yeah. little, the whole ship with that. No way. Yeah. <laughs> so truly is uh, like a video game. Wow, that's amazing. Of course, we have all different uh, installation, uh, different uh, navigation equipment all around in the cockpit here, so easily accessible to the operator. So from an uh, information management point of view, there is, this is exceptionally uh, efficiently designed bridge. So, so nicely organized, uh, very ergonomic. And, uh, if you can see up there, we have all these overhead monitors, different information that we need to be aware of. So we have information, we have a CCTV cameras, on the most, uh, the first and the last monitor over there on the side, and then we have information, the thrusters on the pods, all dif different conning information, the pod angle, the speeds, the sets, the headings, the rate of turns, the wind indication, then we have information on the ship list and the, and the tree. In here we have a chronic chart system over there with our route built in. So we just, the system follows the route that we program and built into the system. And we have radar to tell us uh, information about traffic around us. So using all this different information together we safely navigate. What the, is this a spare console or is this used? To yes, this is additional console monitoring station. Right. From here we don't drive, but we monitor. We have radar and active charge. Same over there, and also in the back, and also here. But the main, main uh, console or main area from where we navigate is this corner here. Right. Main station. We so have uh, two azipods on this ship. These are propellers that rotate 360 degrees. So they serve purpose of the rudder as well. So it's two big propellers that are pulling water, not pushing like traditional oh, propellers. Right, right. These are pulling water, grabbing, and by turning them around, we control the heading. So we steer the ship. So we don't have the rudder in addition. You don't have a rudder at all? No. So we just turn the propellers the way we like. Right, right. So these two big... Uh, I don't know how you call it, controls, <laughs> uh, are used uh, to move the propulsion system to rotate and to adjust the speed. So by pushing this uh, little handle, we adjust the RPMs, and that's how we control the speed. So we have two propulsion systems, two azipods, wow. left and right, four star. So we can go up to 145 revolutions on each propeller to make top speed. Right. But right now we are doing only 70 because we don't need much speed. We are doing a little bit of as you can see up there. Yeah. Because we, we, we didn't travel far. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't want to go too far out there in the oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Atlantic uh, in a rough sea, so we <laughs> before we, we, we reach uh, rough seas. Are they the, at the back, the azipods? Right at the back? All the way in the back. And so you have nothing in the middle or the front? In the middle, nothing but the front we do. I'm about to cover that. We have uh, four thrusters. These uh, propellers give us uh, sideways. So for docking, uh, undocking, coming alongside, lifting the ship, turning, we use this uh, thrust in the most forward part of the ship. So pro propellers that are pushing either to port or to south uh, and help us move the forward part of the ship. So we have four of them, 3.5 megawatts each. So lots of power, and these pods are 20.5 megawatts, so that's lots of power. So they are controlled from here, the thrusters, the commands, the pods as well, the motors. So 
you can do emergency shutdown from here. We also have pillars for emergency steering. We can steer by turning the pods, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. We can uh, turn them together or in separately, depending what modes we select. Or we can use these tillers for steering. And also we have hand steering, the traditional wheel. Oh, wow. And that's why we have a quartermaster with us on watch always. That tiny wheel is located up front here. And it's not any big anymore, <laughs> like traditionally used to be. Yeah, yeah, These big yeah, ones are gone, yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, what well. we are left with is this tiny thing, like in the airplanes. Oh, I've got to see that. Yeah. Take a look at it. <laughs> it's it's Mickey it Mouse. Be huge, <laughs> it should be. I, this is a shame, embarrassment for the industry. How, the, how, how on earth did they design that? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Actually, not, not as bad as your little joystick, though. <laughs> I mean, that, that is the silliest thing I've ever seen in my life. You know. <laughs> what is it? 168,000 tons on a, on a bit of stick. <laughs> Crazy. So what, what do you think about the ship? Amazing, amazing. amazing. Truly incredible product. Eh? Unbelievable, unbelievable. Air lubrication system to lubricate the, the ship keel so that the uh, resistance from the water traveling along the keel is, is reduced. So we oh have microscopic God, bubbles that we sent out you know, all along the hull. To make it smooth? To make we it smooth. have nozzles all along the hull and we pump out these uh, microscopic bubbles, air bubbles. Wow. And they create that seal between the water the cushion between the water and the key. Wow. So there is not that much resistance from us traveling through the water. So we make more speed. Wow. Then we have uh, advanced air uh, exhaust uh, scrubber system, advanced exhaust purifier, AEP. So we scrub our exhaust. So what emission that goes out in the atmosphere is, is clean. No sulfur. What? Sulfur removed completely. Wow. Wow. Like, like a catalytic yeah. converter. Or also, advanced water purifying system. That's what we screen. We, we treat all the all the waste water, grey water, black water. We treat in the bioreactor. Then we remove the, the soil. We burn it, and what we pump out is drinkable water. And we bottle it and we sell it to car. We bottle it and sell it to car. <laughs> so this is this. We're going to quote you. <laughs> all the, the high-tech technology invented so far, it's been introduced in the ship. Wow. So, um, have, have you, is, has, it, has there been any surprises in terms of how it handles or? No. No? It's exactly as, as exactly as it, <laughs> you said that with a smile. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Captain. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, was that the wrong kind of question? <laughs> It's, it's fine tuning. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, that's what I was thinking. You've got to learn a bit, aren't you? Thank you very much, now. Captain. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said you want to see the controls, Actually, right? Just to begin. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce you to Captain Patrick Dahlgren. He is Vice President of Marine Operations for Royal Caribbean International and Azamara Club Cruises. Thank you. Nice introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I used to be a big captain in, in the fleet before as well. So I used to be captain on the Oasis of the Seas, uh, the Voyager of the Seas, Navigator of the Seas, Liberty of the Seas, and my first command was Sovereign of the Seas. So, and uh, she basically fits into to the 27. Um, big difference in size, right? Yeah. Uh, I was also uh, shoreside for a year and a half in 2010 11, working for Harry Kulavara with the design for then called Project Sunshine, which is the quantum. Ah. So I was the lead for the nautical design and safety design of this ship. When was that again? Uh, 2010 2011. So it's been like, it's been 40, uh, four years to, yeah. Yeah, so it's basically a white paper at that point, and we work together to, you know, it's a big 
collaborative effort with a lots of people involved in building and designing a ship like this. We partner with the the greatest and best partners that is out there in the industry today. We don't do everything in house. We do a lots of things that we partner with IMO, with DMV, even with Lloyd's actually. Even if we don't use them as a classification society on. Um, the Royal Caribbean International brand, where we have the Monda Samara Club cruises and on celebrities. Uh, what you see here is the safety command center, the most uh, advanced safety command center that exists in the fleet today, up until the quantum, uh, is uh, the Oasis class, which was the first time of its kind where you actually removed the safety command center and incident center from the bridge. Traditionally, everything on the bridge is in one place. So you have all the navigation equipment, you have all the communication equipment, you have all of the incident and response equipment on one place. Which is not very human-centered design, right? <laughs> because it's not one person dealing with everything and it's kind of getting a little bit of a noise pollution when everything is on one place. So what you have here is the quantum leap in uh, in, uh, in safety safety um, command center. Some of it is a semi copy of what the Navy is using. So both the British and the new Elizabeth class aircraft carrier, as well as the latest and greatest, as well as the Navy command center in Virginia and United States. Uh, what we did is we worked together as a working group that I led to do this design. So basically here is the incident pod. So in here with doors that you can close, which is sound insulated, you have uh, the control of the incident. So right now we're doing a little drill and we have constant different drills and scenarios and things that we drill the crew on. Um, so whether there is a damage, whether there is a blackout, whether there is a fire, or any other incident that you can imagine is being controlled and uh, monitored and uh, commanded from that point. It's under the leadership of the staff captain normally. And the same with uh, when I was talking about blackout, for example, this ship is fully safe return to port, which is uh, a semi-new term after the carnival's incidents in particular. And with, um, with having ship adrift at sea and no toilet working and things like that. So, what does that mean exactly then? Basically, um, well, when you don't have a power on the ship, then you can't provide any of the amenities. So this ship is built fully certified for a safe return to port. Most of our ships is anyway, but this one is the first one where we have really, well, Oasis also have taken the step fully above and beyond all compliances that's even coming into force in the future. But what does that mean in real terms? So in real terms is that if in case you would lose one engine, you have two engine spaces with two completely separate units to get the power out of it. So if you lose one, you have the other section, you have four man engines. Then if you would lose two, both two compartments, which is completely watertight between, between both, both underneath and on the side, we have double skinned hull, 1.4 meters, all the way along the side of the ship of all the technical areas of the vessel. So the probability that would happen is next to nil. But if it will, let's say both of them, you have two independent emergency generators, which in themselves, if enough to supply the whole ship with power. So you have backup one, backup two, backup three, backup four. But of course, I think it's impossible, and we should never say that. But yeah. normal ownership only have the first. Right. right. So we have all four, right? Which makes a big difference. So basically, for us to have the same scenario, you would need four missiles on the right place. Well, then, in theory, toilets won't flush. <laughs> That's a quote. <laughs> No, but it is it is it is extremely well designed, and you know we have done whatever we can to partner with the with the best people in the world to design this ship. So that's the incident side of things. To talk about that, here is the um, uh, the evacuation side. So you saw when you joined the ship in regards to um, the mustering. So you have the e mustering system here. So the e mustering system over here is can also be monitored in the center command pod, which is being run by the captain here, 
and he can watch here on the top with the chandelier and he can see all the different areas of what he wants to monitor and dependent on what's going on in each pot. So initially maybe you have a fire, maybe you have a grounding. So the staff captain is dealing with that in there and the information comes out to the captain who is placed here. He can walk between the pods as he please, of course, but you can close it off so you have more of a quiet area here so they don't disturb each other. On this end, like I said, the evacuation pod, you will have the cruise director, you will have the GMDSS officer, which is the officer for external emergency communications, and the mustering will actually see, we will make sure we can track who's at the assembly station and what's the level of the mustering, right? Then the next step, which hopefully will never happen, but the next step after the assembly station will be the lifeboats. We can track here then the loading of the lifeboat. So how many people is in each lifeboat? So the captain will be able to, from here, have complete control and see what's going on in each area of the ship, which hasn't happened before. So for example, in the past, um, when everything was placed on the same, same, same place, on the bridge, then, for example, if the captain at 1 a.m. in the morning when there was a fire going on in the ship and he needs to make an announcement to the guest to calm the guest down, he's in the midst of all the alarms and everything that goes on. And of course, rest assured, when you do that, you're going to have an officer that screams in the background, Captain, Captain, you know? So it's not very, what do I say, calming for the guest, maybe, yeah, yeah. that announcement, right? When yeah. you, hear, you hear the alarms now, right? right? So when you have that in the background. So here you have an option, your PA system here, you have one on the bulkhead here, you have one in that pod, you have one in the, in the incident pod, in the evacuation pod. So you have the option to kind of have a silent area for those, right? Right, right. So, but this is truly a, a step forward, that's for sure, in, uh, in being able to handle an incident and being more task-driven and human design-driven. So that's the idea behind this. So the work group that did this is actually the same work group as I led to design the bridge as well, which also is very human-centered design. Well. Uh, time for one more question, Captain Thatcher. Any questions? <laughs> no, what is it? <laughs> how many? How many? You know, to be honest, um, I'm a big fan of 20. Person in the project group was was actually laughing at me when we designed this because he was saying that. This is so Jack Bauer. It <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's great. But um, how many computers in total does the, the ship have? Ooh, you take you know. that's such a good question. Yeah. Today, there's so, I, yeah, I don't know the figure. It's enormous. Yeah, I mean, it must be. Just, just today is quite interesting when we were talking in the, in the question session. I don't know if you were down in the musical earlier, yeah. but the question in regards to the broadband, right? Right. We have over 5,000 devices or whatever it was, that was 4,000 something, that's on this morning at 8 a.m., right? Right. There's 30 times faster speed of broadband now than it is on any ship in the world today, and we're going to get 500 times that three days before New York, right. and then for next year with the Anthem season, with O3B. And I personally used it on the Oasis, which was the first ship where O3B was flying on, and I was actually calling in just for fun on one of our conferences with my Skype on my, uh, I'm an Apple guy, so <laughs> on my Apple devices. Beautiful, really? amazing, directly from a ship. And that comes from someone who started in this company 15 years ago when I had to wait for a letter from my girlfriend every two years <laughs> yeah. to come by post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a little bit different. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That was excellent. Yes, thank you. <laughs>